Wow, good evening. Uh, first, congratulations to my fellow inductees. I'm very proud to be part of the class of 2018. I think it's, uh, it's absolutely great. I want to thank uh, all my friends uh, and family, my sisters, and my children, for being here tonight. Uh, it's extraordinary uh, to share this evening. And um, I have to say that I've spent uh, most of my life in, in what I refer to as Roger mode. My good friend Roger Penske's sharing the night with me. And, and Penske mode is that uh, whenever you would win something or achieve something, you spend 30 seconds celebrating and then you're figuring out how you're going to win the next race or beat the next competitor. Uh, I'll never forget, Roger, you and I in uh, 94 took the famous or infamous Mercedes engine to Indy 500 with over a thousand horsepower and uh, won that race. And uh, by the way, if Roger ever invites you to go to the Indy 500, on, uh, on the one hand, go, because it's like an experience you'll never have again, but then you, there's no reason to ever go to the Indy 500 again, because you can't top it. Um, so Roger wins the race, of course, and it's like 15 minutes later, and I see him off in the corner kibitzing with engineers. And I, I go over to Roger, I say, Roger, what the hell are you doing? He says, well, you know, they're gonna change the rules. We gotta figure out how to win next year. And um, uh, that's sort of how I'm wired, and I always took inspiration from that. So tonight, I have to say, though, this is one of those moments in my life where it forces you to be somewhat reflective, like how did I go on this improbable journey uh, a street kid from Philadelphia to stand here tonight. And I, I think there were several things. One, um, extraordinary uh, managers and executives and, and talented people that I worked with uh, over the last 40 plus years, many of whom are here tonight. And we made each other better and we had a lot of fun together and we did incredible things. And I thank you and I, I I treasure our night, uh, our times together, and we'll never forget them. Uh, next, I had great mentors in my career, without whom I would not be standing here tonight. And I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. And finally, I, had, I was fortunate enough to have great parents. Um, they were literally the greatest generation parents. And they met in 1940, Kay and Joe. They worked at the same company. And Kay liked Joe, but Joe wasn't paying any attention. She was in charge of payroll. So she stopped paying him. <laughs> so eventually Joe goes to Kay and says, what the hell, I've been working here weeks and I'm not getting paid. And she goes, well, you came to the right person. I can straighten it out, but you're gonna have to take me to dinner. <laughs> So they go to dinner, and, and uh, he brings her home at one o'clock in the morning. Now, this is a big Irish Catholic family, first date, one o'clock in the morning. So my grandmother is up, waiting up, and says, this is not going to work. And Kay looks at her and says, pay no mind. I've met the love of my life. I'm going to spend the rest of my life with this man. And uh, that's what they did. And, raised a big Irish Catholic family. My father was a mechanical engineer, went through school at night, and somewhere between the time that I was out of diapers and could walk, I started holding the flashlight for him to fix things. He could fix anything. And not just for us, but the neighborhood. He was like Mr. Rogers of the neighborhood, and he, whenever somebody, something broke, we. Mike, come on, grab the flashlight. He had, he, and the whole time he's repairing things, he's explaining to me how everything works. Uh, so he sits me down one day and he says, Mike, you're a Jackson. I said, okay, okay, I got that part. Uh, work will define you. If you want choices in work, you need an education. You got a lot of brothers and sisters and uh, you're gonna have to pay for your education, 
Therefore, you're going to have to get a job. So I was 10 years old when I got this speech. <laughs> so I started the next week as a stable boy at a barn down the street. I walk into my first stall of horse manure, which is higher than me. I'm getting paid a dollar a stall. There's 20 stalls to do. And it's one of the great lessons in, in life at that moment, 10 years old. You can either bemoan the fact that you're with this mountain of horse manure, or you can get on with shoveling the horse manure, and the faster you get it all done, the more money you're going to make. So where's Frank? Frank, right? Move that horse manure as fast as you can. And this was one of the great lessons in my life that still to this day, when I find myself surrounded by horse manure, just start shoveling and eventually you get to the other side. <laughs> hey, I tell you, it really works in life. So there, um, I go off to college. And now by this point, I got a landscaping business. And one time I'm driving back to school, I got my Dodge van full of grass clippings, getting a little high, just from the grass clippings. And um, on the Schuylkill Expressway in Philadelphia, and this car goes by. It's the most beautiful car I've ever seen. I have no idea what it is. I start chasing it. We get off at City Line Avenue. It pulls into this exotic car dealership. I pull right in behind it. This guy gets out of it. It's got a gullwing door that goes up. I said, I need to buy that car. It was a Mercedes-Benz 300 SL. So he tells me the price. That was the end of that story. <laughs> but he says, good car salesman. And I, I respect good salespeople. He says, you know, but the baby brother over here, 190 SL, the one out front, you can buy for $1,000. Now, at this point, it's got like a quarter of a million miles on it or whatever. I didn't care. I just was charming. I just had to have it. So I said, I'll give you $100 down. And I'll give you $100 a month. It was one of those buy here, pay here spots. So, boom, off I drive at a 190 SL. So, uh, I would say the 190 SL was more a step brother from an engineering point of view than a baby brother. And it had massive problems constantly. So, you know, you, you just got to find your way. So I literally went to the Mercedes-Benz dealership and said, look, I'll start turning, I'll, I'll sweep the floor, whatever you want. Just get people to help me fix this car because I love it. I want it in my life. And this is when I really was a transformational moment that I fell in love with the car business.